I'm Casper. I'm a Singaporean in my early 30s and I want to talk about budgeting today. So why budget? Budgeting is so important to me. It is a part of my life now at this age and I'm so glad that I have this to really rely on as I grow older. I started this habit around my mid-20s and if you really just started working, I really recommend that you look into your budget and see how you can implement this in your life. In this video today, I want to talk about um, why budget and how to even start budgeting in the first place. So why budget? The main reason why I budget is because I want to make short-term financial decisions very easily and painlessly. So when I started out in my job, when I was in my early 20s, you know, starting a new job in a big four, I really didn't know what to do with my money. I kind of just looked at what other people were doing and that was what I was learning from. And every time we went to eat expensive food, I felt obligated to say yes. So I didn't know where my money was going. I don't know what I was spending my money on. Uh, things just kept disappearing. O overall, at the end of the year, it does seem like I had more money than before. But was it the amount that I wanted? Was it towards my financial goals? Um, was I doing well or was I not doing well? These were questions that I really wanted to answer. And because I couldn't answer them, every time I bought something or made a purchase or, or spent my money, I felt guilty. I felt a bit guilty. So it really depends on your personality. I know a lot of people spend money without, um, without that kind of clarity or, or without guilt. If you can spend money without guilt, uh, kudos to you. But if you want to spend money without guilt and know that you are still on track towards your financial goals, you do need a budget. I think budgeting is so important. Why I budget is because I want to make spending decisions easily and painlessly. And there are two ways. The first way is to not think about it at all and just live life in the moment, you know, making sure that, um, that you know, you're just taking care of yourself now. What is in the future is in the future. Um, as a person, I can't do that because I'm full of anxiety about what the future brings and what could happen. So I don't want to spend money not knowing, you know, whether I can survive another year without a job. In, in this day and age, you know, to be honest, I was laid off uh, in 2022. So you will never know what will happen. And I just want to be prepared for all such situations. So the only alternative is to really budget so I can move myself towards financial wellness and even financial independence if that's possible. Let's just clear things up. Let's be very specific. What is the purpose of a budget? A budget to me is to plan your short-term expenditures uh, and savings as well. Where are you going to save? What are you going to spend on in the short term? That is kind of big ticket but not big ticket enough to be long term. So for example, something that could be a short-term saving would be a trip that I want to go uh, next year or maybe in the upcoming year. Uh, a big ticket item that I wouldn't put into my budget would be like my HDB flat, which would cost hundreds and thousands of dollars. That would be something that I want to keep outside of the budget. I just want to make sure that my budget is clear for me in the short term and that's the whole point of it. If you have ever studied business or read an annual report, a budget to me would be a cash flow statement versus a balance sheet. So for me, I keep my net worth calculations elsewhere. To scope it all out, a budget would be the cash flow statement, it would be the short term expenditures and savings. Oh, I just want to make a note before we go any further. A budget isn't meant to restrict you beyond your means, it's not to make you feel super uncomfortable. I just, a, a budget would just help you understand if you can make a purchase. A budget will help you understand how much money you can spend. And a budget will help you make sure that there are no fraudulent transactions that happen or even transactions that you don't know about. It makes you aware, right? So, for example, if your bank charges you a random fee, uh, a budget will help you know that because you will see, hey, this is the amount I spent on my card. Why is there an additional fee now? And then you know, oh, your, your annual fee has come in, you know, for your credit card. That's just an example. A budget doesn't restrict your spending because ultimately you de designed it and you made the decisions. So a budget just helps you keep you on track towards those decisions you have made. And because they are your decisions, you can make the changes to your budget if you want. So if you're like, um, I feel very restricted with this budget, just give yourself more money, save a little less, you know, as long as it's a conscious decision, I think that really helps. So in this video, let's cover how you can start setting up your budget. The first thing you need to clear up is how much income you're making. Uh, so if you are getting an allowance, you can use this. If you are getting a regular income, it's very easy. Just look at your payslip, you know exactly how much you make. If you have a uh, more flexible job, if you're a freelancer, you get different amounts per month, what you can do is, um, you know, have a average amount that you plan for and then when you get additional money, you can maybe plan out by percentage or, or make a decision there and then. Of course, 
having a regular income with your regular decision every month really helps so that you don't have to think so much. I don't have to think every month, how much should I put into this category or that category? And that brings me forwards to the next question, which is how to break your income into categories. So before I define what categories are, I just want to be clear, what I'm doing here is an envelope budgeting method. I don't know if you heard it. I used to subscribe to YNAB, which is you need a budget. So that's primarily how I kind of budget my, my income. And one envelope here, what we call it, I will call it a category. So it's a spending ca category. What do you spend your money on? This is like your conceptual bucket in your brain. It has nothing to do with your bank account. It has nothing to do with the, the money in your wallet. A category here is your conceptual bucket or envelope in your mind. So for example, um, something that you, you may want to have would be food. So all your food comes from one envelope. Another, another example would be your fund spending. Uh, other examples will include trips uh, and those are more frivolous kind of, um, I call it frivolous, it's not because food is a basic uh, necessity, but I think you get what I'm talking about, right? Something more fixed or something that you really must pay attention, for example, would be um, taxes. Taxes could be a category on its own, something you have to pay the government for how much money you earn. Could be your insurance, which is also a must-have. Uh, if you don't have insurance, I'm going to make a video soon about insurance, hopefully. Uh, if you have any thoughts about that, please leave a comment down below. Or it could be something like investments. So something like investments wouldn't be as key as, let's say, um, taxes would be because you don't have to do it, but it would really help your financial wellness more than maybe free spending would or fund spending would. Yeah, so those are some examples of categories. So what I want you to do now is to maybe take inspiration from what I have or from your mind, you know, write down all the categories you have. Um, at the later part of this video, we're going to do this together on Google Sheets, which is one of my favorite tools. So you can actually see how I break down uh, a salary into different buckets. I believe there are other um, Singaporean influencers who have done this, so you, you should take a look at those so they can, you know, understand how people generally do things. Uh, in one of my previous videos, I did talk about, you know, paying attention to how much you're spending, recording things down. That's ideally what you do. But if you don't, it's okay. Here you just decide how much you want to allocate to a certain category. This is your draft budget, you know, I talked about. So if you do feel like you are struggling with this budget, you may want to change the rules, change your budget a little, move things around. That's always okay. This is just a starting point. So don't put too much stress into it. You may want to look at how much taxes you're paying now, for example, how much you may want to invest. So there are rules like 4, 1, 50, something like, I don't even know. <laughs> it really depends on what you want to do. And then some categories are fun, like um, food, uh, like restaurants going out, um, free spending, like my pop mart as obsession would be under free spending, uh, electronics in case your phone you know, dies, you want to make sure that you are saving up to a new phone. So that's what you really do. And then now you have sort of a budget, right? Let's just go into the budgeting now. I'm going to go into Google Sheets and show you how I actually do a budget. So what you do is open a new spreadsheet. <clears throat> Sorry if you hear any rain, it started raining here. But anyway, you open a new spreadsheet and you key in your salary here. Let's just start. Salary and then we can click uh, enter CPF, we can enter CDEC or whatever you're forced to donate to because this is a Singaporean thing. Typically companies take out $2 from this, uh, from your salary. And then I guess we can see what our take home pay is. Let's just put a bottom thick line. And then here's where we start to enter our categories, what we think is important. So we can put maybe $5,000, let's just put 5000 And then here we can actually format as currency. It shouldn't be pounds. I, I want this to be um, in dollars. So Singapore dollars here, you see that. And typically your CPF would be 20%. And then you'll see that would be two dollars. So let's just put two dollars. And then here we have equals, minus, minus. So this is your leftover. This is the take home pay. So you guys can follow whatever I'm doing here. If you don't like the font, I don't like the font. I'm gonna just change it to Roboto. My favorite is Roboto Mono. So let's do that. Okay. Um. Yeah. So the next one we want to do probably would be like a parents allowance. Uh. If you do stay away from your parents and you live alone and you rent, you probably have rent here because it's super important, right? Uh, we also have taxes. Taxes, we can sum, we can just guess. So for $5,000, it will be about 60K. So 60K, it will be safe to, to you know, do a 7,000, 7%. 7 
So it is safe. Uh, we will definitely have less than this amount with um, 5k. So we can just, I guess we can just take 3350 as an aim, maybe $3,000. So maybe aim for a year, this would be $3,000. So this would be, this divided by 12. Of course, you can do uh, more. I, I just like to save more for taxes just in case. So for parents allowance and rent, let's just see how things go. So for this one, I would say these are all like fixed expenses or expenses that are really important. So something would be maybe your iCloud, if you have iCloud, your gym, if you have a gym subscription, all your subscriptions should be here. So Spotify, Netflix, because all these are kind of like something you agreed to, right? We're, we're talking about more important things. Transport would be important because that's how you get to your job. Yeah, so maybe we can start like this first. So these are all the fixed amounts. Uh, let's give our parents maybe 10% of what we, we make. Uh, rent, we live with our parents, so zero. iCloud, maybe $2. Uh, gym, maybe uh, $150. Spotify, I don't have Spotify. I have no idea how much these cost. Transport in Singapore could be about $80. Uh, more if you take Grab. And then let's just do that again. Let's just underline this. So we know how much is left over after starts um, and fixed. Equals to, so we'll take the take home pay and we'll minus the sum of everything. Okay, that's about $3,000 left. Um, let's move on to our investments, okay? So maybe long-term investments. Because it's really important, right? Maybe you want to invest in some stock or some ETF. Uh, here we can estimate how much we actually want to save out of our take home pay. So for example, if I want to save 50%, let's we can put 50% here first. And then we see what's left over. Okay. So 50%. Let's just see what's left over. I put 50% of the full take home pay here. And we're left with $1,000. Right, so what can this one thousand dollars be? This could be for food. So maybe for food, we'll just put five hundred, and then for f the the rest will just be free spending, which would be this minus this. So this is basically how you would do it. Um, here is where you may want to adjust whatever you wrote here. The best case scenario is you kind of know exactly what you need. So you you would know your Spotify. You would know. Oh, I forgot one thing. Let's just add it in. So our phone bill, if you use GOMO, you're probably on $20. So, you know, as you think through your day and you think about how you spend money, these are how you want to populate things. Another important one that I left out that you may have is also insurance. So insurance is really important. So I pay insurance on a, for a, year, on a year's basis. So let's say $1,000 for insurance or one. So you can actually do your own calculations here and just fill it up. So, this is how you actually do do your budgeting. If you feel like you have too much for food, you have a lot for free spending, you want to be more aggressive, you can of course always just tweak things. So you see 60%, we have no money for free spend, we don't want that, we can change, change that back to 50%. And yeah, so I hope this was helpful, this is just running through how I categorize my income. Oh, now you have seen how I've done a budget, I just want to make sure that you know that overspending is okay. You would you just have a negative amount. From the negative amount, just move things around. So like um, you can take things out of your emergency budget, uh, emergency savings if you need like uh, more food on that, that month. Um, just make sure you pay it back. Or you could take, take things from your free spend so you can eat more food, for example. Um, it doesn't need to be restrictive. You shouldn't feel bad about your budget. Your budget is here to empower you and support you in your financial wellness journey. So that's something really important. Um, in my next video, I want to show you one of my favorite tools that I use. This is the main budgeting tool I use. It's called Aspire Budget. Just to be very clear, it's not Aspire app, but it's Aspire Budget. It's a free Google Sheet online that I use to keep track of my expenditure. It makes me, uh, helps me review the balances in my accounts, make sure that everything is okay. It's really key to my personal financial system that I actually have in my life. So yeah, in my next video, I'll show you how to set that up. And in a later video, maybe I'll show you how to actually use it on a day-to-day -day basis. So set up and then day-to-day -day use. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me out. And you have a good day. Take care. Bye.